European royal families, Moorish Jewish origin, the royal families of Great Britain and Sweden, and the Jewish Berbers that they descend from. Universal Center for Renovation presents historical and biblical Israelites. This video is strictly for educational purposes and commentary, and this video contains information of biblical and secular historical literature, so enjoy. The European Royal families all have a common origin from Britain to the Nordic countries like Sweden and Norway to Russia and Greece, Italy, Spain, France, or Germany all have a common descent. It has been thoroughly documented that the major royal houses of Europe are from the historical and biblical tribes of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Many wars and great tribulation fell upon the ancient Israelites and caused them to be scattered worldwide. Some left their homeland through immigration, some through forced deportation. In time, those Israelites that were slaves in foreign lands became freemen, and those freemen became soldiers, and those soldiers became generals and senators and rulers in foreign lands. Some European royal families can trace their pedigrees back to Roman generals and senators. Some can trace their origin back to Germanic chieftains but these Roman generals and Germanic chieftains were Israelites. And some of the European royal families could trace their lineage or pedigree back to Moors from North Africa who were Israelites who converted to Islam and on the side of Arab conquerors who conquered North Africa and they the Jewish converts helped the Arab conquerors conquer Spain and France and other parts of Europe this is their story. European royal families that lead or that family pedigrees go back to Moors who were of Jewish origins. Royal houses from Great Britain and Sweden who were descended from Jewish Berbers or North African Jews or North African Israelites. Job 9.24 The earth is given unto the hand of the wicked. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? The Hebrew 
word kasa means to cover, conceal, to hide. The ruling families were replaced or overthrown by a class of people known as the bourgeoisie or the middle class or the bankers. They not only replace who people would call the judges because the kings of the earth were judges, but they also covered and concealed and hid their ancient biblical origin. The word revealed in Second Thessalonians 2 and 8 means apocalypto, to uncover, lay open what has been veiled or covered up, to make known, make manifest, disclose what before was unknown. Second Thessalonians 2 and 8. And then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. The Bible is a book of laws, of history, and of prophecies or predictions. It was predicted that the Israelites would have a great empire in the Near East, Solomon and David. It was predicted that the Israelites would fall and be scattered all across the world in 70 AD, in the time when the northern kingdom of Israel, during the Assyrian Empire, fell. You can also find prophecies where it is stated that the Israelites would rule Europe for a thousand years, known as the Dark Ages or the Middle Ages. It was also prophesied that these ruling elite of Israel, ruling Europe, would rule with Christ or the Messiah, meaning that the temporal government state the spiritual government and the church would rule together according to biblical law. Then eventually first started with Constantine. When Constantine established the Bible as state law in Rome. This rulership eventually ended during the time of the Renaissance. In the time of 1648, during the Glorious Revolution, in the revolutions of Europe, like the French Revolution, and the Revolution of 1848, down to the Revolution in 1917, where secular government replaced state and church government. The secular governments that came into power did not only decide to dismantle these governments based on biblical ideals, but to conceal the origin of their princely rulers who were Israelites, biblical Israelites. So let's begin with Queen Charlotte and the British royal bloodline from untold stories of history's past. You can find this article online. On the left, we can see the royal coat of arms of the modern day British royal family, the House of Windsor. On the right, we can see Queen Charlotte, a German princess who became Queen of Great Britain 
around the time of the American Revolutionary War, or around the time of 1776, the image in the middle is the image of the person on our right is Queen Elizabeth II, Queen of England, who recently passed away. In the middle, the male, the man, is Prince Harry, her son. To the left is Marco or Meghan Marco. She's a princess of the British royal family. But the article highlight or highlights how she may have issues in dealing with racism. But according to the article, according to history, she's not the first British who was a person of color. In fact, the British royal family descends from people of color. So Prince Harry and his mother, Elizabeth I, have royal blood because of people of color. In the last video, I touched upon certain documentation that proved that Queen Charlotte of Great Britain in America was a woman of color. Now, the video was incomplete, but I also tried to bring up the fact that her husband, George III, was also a man of color. And there is nothing shocking about this information. This is all public sourced information. But unless I explain the context behind this idea or information that Queen Charlotte of Great Britain was a person of color, King George III was a man of color. The Hanover Dynasty, Germans, or people of color. If I do not explain this in the right perspective, it may be taken the wrong way as if I am sensationalizing this information. Charlotte of Mecklenburg Strassel, born 1744, died 1818. From the painting from the studio of Alan Ramsey, National Portrait Gallery, Charlotte, who married George III in 1761, took no part in state affairs and was without political influence. Throughout their long reign, she and the king set a high standard of domesticity, which with the colorlessness, decorum, and the economics of their court contrasted sharply with the world of fashion, which they did not enter. Her harshness towards her sons and youth may have provoked their later excesses, which gave her much pain. The etiquette of her court nearly broke the spirits of Fanny Burney, the lively author of Evelina, who was in attendance on her for five years. Now that was a short biography of the Queen, Queen Charlotte, who historians recognize was a person of color, had a dash of Moorish blood. And the modern monarchy, the Windsors, are descended from Queen Charlotte. Well, let's read the article again. Let's read this article again means this article was read in the last video. If you didn't check that video out, you have to check it out. It helps you understand where this video is trying to go. What's the explanation for the dash of more or the dash of more blood? So if you haven't checked out the last video, check it out. 
Don't argue with me. Most know little of the lineage of the royal family. Since during the First World War, the family decided to cut ties with their ancestral German roots simply by changing their last name from Sachs, Coburg, and Gotha to Windsor. However, those very German roots created the foundation for the modern monarchy we know today and other famous royals around the world. With a dash of more, all these families have a dash of Moorish blood. And who were the Moors? The Moors were North African Muslims who were a part of the Mora Berber tribe. They inhabited the land of Mauritania, modern-day Morocco and Algeria. During the Middle Ages, the Moors conquered many places in Europe, leaving their influence for years to come. So on the left, we have Queen Charlotte, whose ancestry can be traced back to people like the man on the right, the Moorish Berbers of North Africa. And not only her, but all modern royal families of Europe have a dash of Moorish blood. But who really were these Moors? And were they originally Islamic Moors? And we have to uncover this history, uncover what is being veiled from the public at the royal houses of Europe. They all had a dash of Moorish blood, including the King of Sweden, who ruled from 1818 to 1844, who also had a dash of Moorish blood. And this is from Sex and Race, Volume 1, Sweden. The present royal family of Sweden is descended from Jean Baptiste Bernadotte, who came from the south of France and was of Moorish ancestry and was swarthy and had woolly hair. Sir D.P. Barton says Jean Baptiste Bernadotte, son of a lawyer of Pa, Pa France, with a dash of Moorish blood in his Gascon veins. So, who were the Moors? So let's turn to Sex and Race Volume 1 again, an excellent book by the author J.A. Rogers. Chapter 15, Miscegenation or Mixing of Different Ethnic Groups. Miscegenation in Spain, Portugal, and Italy. Who were the Moors? The first colonizers of ancient Spain were the Carthaginians, who, as were said, were also Negroid. Carthaginians were Canaanites or Phoenicians, who traveled and their navies with the Israelites. The original inhabitants of Spain was a people of Japheth called Kadesh, and they also was of Negroid ancestry. Barcelona was founded by Amilcar Barker, who I mentioned in a previous video was a Hebrew and this information was brought out by David Ben-Gurion, one of the founders of the state of Israel and a prime minister. Hamilcar Barker was Negroid. 
because he was Carthaginian, but he was a Hebrew Israelite. And Hamilcar Barker was a father of the illustrious Hannibal. Black peoples and white continued to pour into Spain under the Romans. But the first great wave of miscegenation came with the Moorish conquest in 711 AD under the leadership of a Negro slave, Tariq. Remember this, this is very important. Who gave his name, as was said to Gibraltar. The rulers of Spain was then the Visigoths, who, in another video, were proof were also Israelites. Rajas calls them a white Germanic race, but this is for another video. Tariq, after defeating the white king Roderick, Xerxes, pushed victoriously northwards. In less than three years, the Moors had seized almost the entire peninsula, the entire Iberian Peninsula, taking capturing Spain and Portugal. In his sex and race, Tariq was called a Negro slave. But was he always a Negro slave? Who was he? Was he an Arab? Was he a Berber? And this is relevant because all monarchs of European royal blood had a dash of Moorish blood. And this is the man that led the Moorish armies into Europe, where the European royalty obtained a dash of Moorish blood. So who is this man, Tariq ibn Zayyad? Tariq ibn Zayyad died 720. So obviously, there's some controversy about when he was born. Was a Muslim general who led the Islamic Umayyad conquest of Visigoth Hispania in 711 to 718 AD. Under the orders of the Umayyad Caliph al Walid I, he led a large army from the north coast of Morocco, consolidating his troops at a large hill now known as Gibraltar. The name Gibraltar is the Spanish derivation of the Arabic name Jabal Tariq, meaning Jabal meaning mountain of Tariq Gibraltar, which is named after him. This is the book that exposes the truth that has been covered up. This is a book that will unveil what has been covered. Hebrewisms of West Africa, page 210. This book was written by Joseph J. Williams, published in 1928. Joseph J. William, S.J. Whenever someone has S.J. after their name, it means, S.J. means Order of the Jesuits. So Joseph J. Williams was a Jesuit. He wrote this book. The Jesuits are a very powerful institution, a part of the Vatican. Many contend that the Jesuits are the intelligence services or service of the Vatican. It's a very powerful institution. So if any group would know the truth of certain matters, it would be the Jesuits. The Arabs, who are called biblically Ishmael, the son of Abraham, the Hebrew, 
The Arabs came again and swept away unstable Berber kingdoms. The original Berbers were North Africans, Hamites, children of Noah's son. They were known as Put, P H U T, or Libyans. Early on, during the time of Solomon, and at other times, the Israelites sent colonies around the world, including North Africa. In time when the Jews were driven out of Jerusalem into North Africa, the Jews, the Israelites, took control of North Africa from the Berbers and ruled. In time, the Arabs came and conquered North Africa, including the kingdoms of the Jewish Berbers. The Arabs or the Ishmaelites came again and swept away unstable Berber kingdoms or Jewish Berber kingdoms at this time. That rose ephemerally. They, the Arabs, welcomed into their ranks on equal terms any defeated warriors prepared to adopt Mohammedanism or converting to Islam. A former officer, this officer, was Tariq, a former officer of a Berber queen, his cousin, also known as Kahina, who had fought against them, fought against the Arabs. So Tariq fought against the Arabs, but lost. So he converted to Islam. A former officer of a Berber queen who had fought against them, the Arabs, his name was Tariq as Ziad. A Jewish Berber himself, Tariq, was a Jewish Berber. And he was made by the Arabs, was made by the governor of the city, Tangier, when he, Tariq, became a Muslim. And this man, with a Berber force of Jews, Berber Jews, stiffened by a few Arabs, a few Arabs, Arabs were with them, but they were mainly Berber Jews, Jews of North Africa, crossed into Spain, the Moors, landed near Mount Khalif, since called after him, Jabal Tariq, the hill of Tariq, that is Gibraltar now. And thus began the Moorish conquest of Spain. Tariq Zayad was a Jewish Berber with a help of some, a little, a few Arabs. The Jews who were called Moors with a few Arabs invaded Spain and thus begun the Moorish conquest of Spain. The Moorish conquest of Spain from 711 to 732. Between 409 and 420, the Visigoths, or Germans, who leaders were Israelites, invaded Roman Spain because Rome controlled Spain. And then the Germanic Visigoths, who leadership were Israelites, took Spain from the Romans. The Visigoths invaded Roman Spain across the Pyrenees, which is the border between France and Spain. After their defeat at the hands of the Merovingians, then the Merovingians, the Franks, the French took Spain from the Visigoths. At the Battle of Voyou, in 507, the Visigoths were pushed into the Spanish peninsula out of France by the Franks. So when the Moors came into France and to Spain, Spain, Spain was being controlled not by the Romans, but by the Visigoths. 
Germanic people who were in the leadership, the leaders, the rulers, the chiefs were Israelites. The Moors took Spain from the Visigoths. The Moors invaded the Iberian Peninsula, Spain and Portugal from North Africa and called the territory Al Andalus, which at its peak included most of modern day Spain, Portugal, and Septimania, which is part of France. The Moors occupied Mazara and Sicily, so the Moors also controlled Sicily off of Italy. In 1827, developing Sicily, developing it as a port, and they eventually consolidated the rest of the island in some of southern Italy. Differences in religion and culture led to a centuries-long conflict with the Christian kingdoms of Europe, which tried to reclaim control of Muslim areas. In Spain, this conflict was referred to as the Reconquista. In 1224, the Muslims were expelled from Sicily to the settlement of Lucera, which was destroyed by European Christians in 1300. The fall of Grenada in 1492 marked the end of Muslim rule in Iberia. Although a Muslim minority persisted into their expulsion in 1609, Tariq was originally a Jew who fought against the Arab invasion of North Africa. Eventually, the Jews of North Africa lost to the Arabs, invading Arabs. Tariq converted to Islam and the Arabs made him a commander of the city of Tangiers, which is located in the Red Circle. Europe and Africa is separated by eight miles of sea or ocean. It's called the Straits of Gibraltar, named after Tariq. In this map, highlighted and the color green is the territory conquered by the Jews of North Africa, also known as Berber Jews, commonly called Moors. The territory that was conquered by this group of Jews or Moors was North Africa, Spain, all the color green, France, Corsica, Sardinia, Sicily, and the tip of Italy. It is a well-known fact that Sicilians are considered Moors, but not only Sicilians, people of southern Italy, people from Sardinia, Corsica, Spain, Portugal, and southern France, not only Sicilians. Southern France, Spain, Portugal, Corsica, Sicily, southern Italians are considered Moors or have Moorish blood. So, in the red circle is Sicily, but this conquest by the Berber Jews included Sicily and other parts of Europe. In April 711, Tarek ibn Malik, the man on the right, a Berber officer, another Berber Jew, 
crosses the streets or the street separating Africa and Europe eight miles with a group of Muslims, Berber Jews, and enters Spain, Al Andalus, as the Muslims called Spain. A word is etymologically linked to Vandals, Germanic Vandals, who ruling class were Israelites. The first stop in the Muslim conquest of Spain is at the foot of a mountain that comes to be called Jabal Tariq, the mountain of Tariq. Today, it is known as Gibraltar. At one time, the Berbers, the Berber Jews, had been Christians, ethnically Jews, but Christians, while under the Roman Empire. But they recently converted in large numbers to Islam when the Arabs invaded North Africa. After the Arab conquest of North Africa, the Jews that lived in North Africa became converted to Islam. Like the man on the right, Tariq ibn Malik. So this history eventually takes us back to France, southern France, Pole France, the location of the home of the dynasty of the founding father or king or ruler of the modern Swedish dynasty, Bernadotte. He was born in a part of France that was conquered by the Moors, Paul, France, Southern France. This is why he had a dash of Moorish blood. He was considered a Moor, which is a Berber Jew. Sweden, the present royal family of Sweden is descended from Jean Baptiste Bernadotte, who came from the south of France and was of Moorish ancestry and was swarthy and had woolly hair. Sir D. P. Barton says Jean Baptiste Bernadotte, son of a lawyer of Paul, with a dash of Moorish blood and his Gascon. Veins. Jean Matisse Bernadotte was from a region in France known as Gascogne, known for it, the inhabitants having Moorish blood. In the novel The Three Musketeers, author Alexander Dumas made the character D'Artagnan to be an inhabitant of the area of Gascogne. So the Tayan is described as having a brown face, being also a person with Moorish blood. The Tayan of the Three Musketeers. The city of Jean Baptiste Bernadat is Paul. In the circle, in the red circle, that's the city of Jean Baptiste. Bernadotte, the king or the founding king of Sweden. Sweden, the present royal family of Sweden, is descended from Jean Baptiste Bernadotte, who came from the south of France and was of Moorish ancestry and was swarthy and had woolly hair. Sir D. P. Barton says Jean Baptiste Bernadotte. Son of a lawyer of Paul, with a dash of Moorish blood in his Gascon veins. For more open sourced information, you can turn to the book, 100 Amazing Facts About the Negro, with complete proof, by author J. A. Rogers. 
To learn more about Jean-Baptiste Bernadotte, turn to page 42, section 61. Bernadotte originated in a part of France where the population has much Moorish or Negro mixture. Due both to the Moorish invasion and the settlement or into the settlement of Moors, there, after the expulsion from Spain in the 16th century, so D. P. Barton says of the people in this part of France, their particular traits were traceable to their mixed ancestry, which comprised French, Spanish, and Moors. From the book The Amazing Career of Bernadotte, page four, London, nineteen twenty nine. And Bernadette and Napoleon. Barton says, Jean-Baptiste Bernadotte, son of a lawyer at Paul, France, with a dash of Moorish blood in his Gascon veins. Page 1, London, 1929. My Moorish is meant Negro. For if Moorish were white, it would have been indistinguishable from other white strain. Moreover, Bernadotte was swabby, and his hair was woolly. Henry de Rochefort, a famous French journalist, attempted to prove that Bernadotte was a Jew, which he was, ethnically. He said Bernadotte had woolly hair and a hooked nose, so common among Jews. In Europe, it was common among Jews to have woolly hair. But Bernadotte's baptismal papers prove that he was a Christian. Many Negro Moroccans of almost pure type have straight noses. And even in America, I have seen African Americans with hooked noses. It is a mistake to imagine that all Negroes, even a pure stock, have flat noses. Some have faces that are Grecian in profile. The Poles or Fulani or Negro Jews of West Africa have so called Shemitic profiles. In France, Spain, and Portugal, there are Negroid Jews with woolly hair. The Portuguese Jews, who are the aristocrats of Jewry, show considerable Negroid strain. A former European diplomat, in an article in the New York Sunday Tribune, Entitled, When is a Colored Man Not a Negro in America? Name several noted Europeans of Negro strain. Bernadotte among them. He says, the Moorish ancestry of his, Bernadotte's mother, is a matter of local knowledge. April 17, 1910. The Swedish king in the United States of America would be considered a man of color. The author tried to soften up the blow by stating it was his mother, Negro ancestry. But Bernadotte came from an area in France that was known for Moorish ancestry. And this picture, this image of this woman on the left, she's a pole girl or Fulani girl of West Africa. And the poles are of Jewish ancestry. This is from 
Sex and Race, Volume 3, J. Rogers. The Poles or Fulani, or the Jews, Jewish Fulanis, were on those slave ships in the transatlantic slave trade. Now, this is an interesting link. It's going to pull out if possible more information on the Poles or Fulanis because they were classified by all historians, majority of historians, I should say, as Jews, Jews of West Africa. And if you really get a good look at her face, they were classified as black Caucasians. Even though they had dark skin, woolly hair, they were still classified as black Caucasian with Shemitic features. And they were known to be taken captive throughout North Central and South America. These Fulani Jews were called in the history books by the anthropologists Shemitic and Black Caucasians. A former European diplomat in an article in the New York Sunday Tribune entitled, When is a Colored Man Not a Negro in America? Bernard Dot was a colored man, but he seemed not to be a Negro in America. And this author named several noted Europeans of Negro strain. Bernard Dot, among them, he says, the Morse ancestry of his Bernadotte's mother is a matter of local knowledge from 1910. I have heard on good authority, J. Rogers is quoting or speaking, that Napoleon spoke of Bernadotte as a mulatto, but I have not found it so far. One day, while speaking of Bernadotte, an acquaintance of mine, from southern France told me that she went to school there with one of the Bernadotte's daughters, who was so dark that she was called the Negress or the Negro woman or girl. Murat, king of Naples and Napoleon's brother in law, perhaps the most spectacular figure of the Napoleonic Wars, came also from this region. Duchess Dia Brandt, who seemed to have known him a little more than a faithful wife should, said of him, There is very much of the Negro in his face, speaking of Marat, king of Naples, and that he, Marat, looked like a mulatto. 1835. The Swedish royal family, beyond constitutional and ceremonial duties, Sweden's royal family is devoted to various good causes. King Carl XVI, Gustav, surrounded by family members, the Royal Court of Sweden, 2023. King Carl XVI, Gustav, surrounded by family members. The Royal Court of Sweden, 2023. Longest reigning monarch in 2023, King Carl XVI, Gustav, celebrated 50 years on the throne as the seventh monarch of the house of Bernadette, and the longest reigning monarch in Swedish history. The house of Bernadette is the royal family of Sweden, founded there in 1818 by King Charles the 14th. John of Sweden. It was also the royal family of 
Norway between 1818 and 1905. Its founder was born in Paul in southern France as Jean Bernadotte. Bernadotte, who had been made a general of division and minister of war for his service in the French army during the French Revolution and marshal of the French Empire and Prince of Ponte Corvo under Napoleon was adopted by the elderly King Charles XIII of Sweden who had no other heirs and whose hosting Gotrop branch of the House of Oldenburg thus was soon to be extinct on the Swedish throne. The current king of Sweden, Karl the Sixteenth Gustav, is a direct descendant of Charles the Fourteenth John, also known as Jean Baptiste Bernadotte. Sweden is one of the most northern countries in Europe. This is a Nordic country. The country in the yellow is Sweden, right next to Norway and Finland. And to the bottom left is the United Kingdom, also known as Great Britain or England. The descendants of Jean-Baptiste Bernadotte sit on the throne of Sweden. They are known as the House of Bernadotte. The king with a dash of Moorish blood. For Sweden, with the times. This is the motto of King Karl the Sixteenth Gustav, Sweden's head of state and foremost representative of the Swedish royal family. Armed with the ambition to serve his country in a manner always suitable to the present, the king ascended to the Swedish throne on the 15th of September, 1973. According to the 1974 constitution, the monarch has no political affinity or formal powers. With duties mainly of a ceremonial and representative nature, 